close your eyes and watch your breath. See if you can stay with each breath as it comes in, as it goes out. There's no one else who's going to be watching over you. You have to be the one who watches over yourself. You're the one you have to depend on. This is a very basic principle in the Buddhist teachings, as he says, atahiyatano nato, the self is its own mainstay, which means you've got to make yourself something you can rely on. Because as we're born in the world, we're not all that dependable. And oftentimes we look at the people around us, they're not that dependable either. So we have to look inside to see what potential we have that we can really rely on. The Buddha gives a list of ten qualities that make you a dependable person, someone you can depend on yourself and other people can depend on you. And it's a good list to keep in mind of how you can develop yourself so that you have a refuge, you have a solid and safe place in life. We'll be going over the list in the course of the Rains Retreat this year. The very first one is virtue. A virtue here means basically abstaining from harm. You make up your mind you're not going to kill, steal, have illicit sex, you're not going to lie, you're not going to take intoxicants. Because you see that all these actions cause harm. Harm to yourself, harm to others. In fact, the Buddha focuses on the fact that even if you're killing somebody else, you're actually harming yourself. You kill somebody, you're not necessarily sending them to a bad destination, but you're making a bad destination for yourself. And once you've made up your mind that you're not going to lie, okay, you have to stick with it. And when you make up your, your mind you're not going to steal, you have to stick with it for these virtues to really become virtues in the mind that you can depend on. If you make a promise to yourself and then turn into something else, who are you going to depend on? If you can't even look after your own well-being in this way, who's going to look after your well-being for you? As children, we had parents looking after us. In some cases, we got complacent because we thought, well, they'll take care of our messes. But there comes a point where we have to learn how to take care of our own messes. You know, sometimes we go through life thinking, well, maybe somebody else will do it. The important thing is not to make a mess to begin with. And this is what the Buddha is teaching you when you take the precepts. You kill, you're making a mess. You steal, you're making a mess. Lest it's sex, lies, intoxicants, all of these things are making messes. Of the five precepts, the one the Buddha said was most important is the one against lying. As he said, if you, if you feel no shame about lying, then there's, you'll be able to do all the other you know, unskillful activities. So you have to take special care about what comes out of your mouth. Make sure that what you say represents the truth. Now, you don't have to tell all the truth all the time. But that doesn't mean you lie. It simply means that certain things you just don't mention. Certain topics that are sensitive, you realize if you talk about them, it's going to give rise to greed, aversion, and delusion in yourself or in other people. Then you just learn how to avoid them. But what you say is true. And that gives value to your, to your words. And you have a principle that's really worth a lot. If someone pays you, offers you $2 million to lie, but you don't lie, that means you have a precept that's worth more than $2 million. Because $2 million can't buy you out of hell. It can't buy you out of the misery that comes when you realize that you've been really harmful. So the precept there is something to protect you. So you don't do things that you later regret, that you later wish, gosh, I'd give a million dollars to go back and not do that. The Buddha is telling you right up front, don't do these things. And you follow his instructions. Nobody's ever gone to hell following the Buddha's instructions. And hell here means not only hell after this lifetime, but also hell in this lifetime. There may be some losses you make in which if you were to lie, you'd gain an advantage. But you decide not to lie. But those losses are minor. As the Buddha said, loss in terms of wealth, loss in terms of your health. That's a minor thing compared to loss in terms of your virtue. So make sure you hold to your virtue, and then your virtue will support you. This is a principle all the way throughout the Dharma. You hold to the Dharma, the Dharma will protect you. And it starts by looking at your actions. And by developing the precepts, you also develop a good foundation for meditation. If you haven't done anything to harm anybody, that when the mind sits down, there's no, there are no regrets that you have to worry about. No regrets that will get in the way of settling down with a sense of ease and well-being and a sense of self-worth and self-esteem. Because that's what you're gaining as you learn how to depend on yourself, self-esteem, that you really are reliable. You can stand on your own two feet. And when you can rely on yourself, other people can rely on you as well. 
So you're not the only one who benefits. But the primary benefit is the fact that you protect yourself by being very careful about your actions. So this is what the Buddha means, that you become your own mainstay. You act in ways that you determine ahead of time are going to be skillful. You avoid things that you determine ahead of time are going to be unskillful. And you learn how to stick with that determination. It's this quality of sticking with it. That's when these virtues become something you can really rely on. <laughs>